Hi, I'm Paul Marsh and today I want to talk about a potentially contentious subject, which is about comments in code. So if I move over to my slide deck. So I kind of think that the whole thing about commenting your code is a bit of a lie. I don't really think it exists, the need for it. And I'll just move my slide over and try to explain why. So what we're told is that it's um, it's good because you need to understand what the code is doing. You can use it for generating your pseudo code and you can use it to document what the thing does at a later date so when you come back to it. Now, for me, I think a lot of the way that code has been going recently is to basically say that the easiest code to understand is an empty file. Like the less code you've got in there, the easier it is to read, the easier it is to understand, and the less chance of you making mistakes. So let's have a kind of real world example of what I'm talking about. So here we've got Filebase. Um, this is a product from Game Dev HQ, and it's got lots of nice assets and things, but one of the other interesting things it has is a set of challenges. So I'm going to go and have a look at this quiz calculator, which I've already downloaded, so I'll just go straight to it. And here we have a little um, question that we want to do something in Unity. So I'm just going to grab these instructions, and I'm going to go to a little piece of script that I've already written. And let's just put this in a nice C style comment so I can split it up. Hopefully this won't be a test of my programming skills or lack of. This is, should be try and keep it all about commenting. So your program should support five quiz grades. Okay, that should be calculated randomly. And based on the average printout, based on the average print out either and we have a set of rules okay so let's just get these so we can see them more on the screen uh, okay right now convention would say that what we need to do is to come in here and say well, you need to create a program that turns out your program should have five quiz grades so we would go something like this we put our pseudo code in there create five quiz grades uh, based on an average so based on an average, or oh, calculated randomly. Um, based on an average. And then print out and grade. Okay. And then we would start to fill this code in. And what you'd end up with is a function that initially would be chock full of code. And I don't want that. I don't really feel the need for it. So done this bit. Now what I think we should do is to say your program should support five quiz grades. So I would say initialize five quiz grades. I mean, the old school um, development would say that, you know, you should have functions like get X and get Y. And these days we don't need to worry about the kind of memory allocations of function names and things like that. You know, we've got plenty of disk spaces. That's, that's, that's something from 40 years ago. So we can just call it what, we, what it is. So initialize five quiz grades, right? And we'll generate that function. All right, calculated randomly. So calculate random scores. I'm going to call them scores rather than grades. Quiz scores. Take an average. So calculate average score. And then display grade. So I would argue that these functions are just as easy to read as the comments that we had before and this is taking up far less noise so that we're already setting out that I'm not going to put a, lots of code inside this function I'm already modularizing it straight from the bat so let's 
create some more skeleton codes of this. Uh, generate methods. Generate methods. Generate methods. Quite sure why I've got a spelling mistake here. Initialize five quiz scores. Oh yeah, change it to scores. Right, okay. So now uh, I think this code is again not simpler to read, already modularized. So I'm I'm off now. So initialize five quiz. Let's let's just do this thing, shall we? Um I don't like the ordering in this, so let's just swap this around for a start. That's what happens when you don't do it in the right order. But I like to keep things in a similar order. Okay, so we're going to say, all right, we need five scores. So I'm going to say uh, scores equals uh, new int array of five. So we've got our five scores. Done, that one's done. Calculate random scores. Okay, so probably just do a for int score index equals zero score index. Oops, score index is less than scores dot length score index plus plus. And then we're just going to assign a score. So a score index equals random range between one and one hundred and one. Okay, so that's calculated our random scores. Nice and easy. Calculate average score. Put some more. I don't really need to fill these in, do I? But there we go. I might as well. Just for completeness. So, da, da, da. okay, we say total score equals zero. Keep it as ints for now. Uh, okay, total score plus equals score index. Average score, again, just as an integer average, equals the total score divided by the number of them. Okay, that's good. Uh, so back here, we calculated our average score. And we need to display it. So we can do print. Lost my keyboard. Print uh, your total score of total score gives an average. Oops, average of average score. Or a grade, or oops, actually calculate the grade. Actually, I think I'll do that separately. Display grade. Separate that out. And calculate grade from average score. So, but then you keep it nice and separate. Single responsibilities here. Calculate average score. Right, so we know, we know we've got an average score now. So, um, how to do this? Uh, switch uh, average score and we'll calculate the grade from that. Uh, grade. Oops. Grade equals, let's put a string in there just to define it. Just so I can stop this being read. Uh, 
okay, so how do we do this? Uh, let's get our rules back. So we want to say when the case of an int, when it is, uh, uh, when the score is greater than or greater than or equal to 90, then our grade is going to be an A. Okay, and then I'm going to default to say our grade is equal to an F. And we can fill in the bits in between. So B, C, D, D, D and B and C. Okay. B, C, I mean, again, the, the, the coding isn't really important. That's not really what I'm talking about here, but... It's going to be greater than 80, greater than 70. And then we're going to say, and average score is less than 90. Average score is less than 90. So anyway, that's it in a nutshell. That's the code all done. So really, to come back to my point, what we've got here now is we've got uh, functions all nicely modularized, all nicely having their own responsibility. Uh, they're easy to understand what they're doing. They're well named. Uh, you can see quite clearly what, what's going to happen without digging into them. Now, conversely, if we'd have gone through the pseudo code commenting route, we would have had one big chunk of code in here with lots of different codes going on. And worse still is what would have happened is if you take something like the um, calculate average scores. So in here, because it was doing, I've done it in a modular fashion, I, I started using, uh, immediately using fields. Now, chances are what you'd have done is if you'd have come in here and started doing this all in one function, these would all be variables, just inline variables. Uh, and when you came to break these out into separate functions, what you'll find is you'll end up with lots of return variables and outs and references and that sort of thing, because that's what the code will try and do to help you when you refactor. So you'd have to go through lots of ugly code and lots of different stages. Uh, and basically your whole process is slower, it's uglier and more prone to error. Um, this way we've come up with something that's really sort of clean. We can get rid of that, don't even need that one now. I know I haven't done the bonus, but that's not what it's about. Um, all the codes are nice and modular and readable and everything's good. So really that's my case for not doing the comments. Now I did say that I would do still use comments. Um, there are times, so you just get rid of that one, don't need that. Of course, of course we know what start means. Um, if say the average score needed an algorithm that was very scientific and isn't at all obvious when you get down to it, then of course you can put comments in. You know, I'm not 100% against comments, but my default position is don't comment unless you need to. That's, that's where I come from. And you're much better off just going straight into creating nicely named functions right from the start. Okay, that's my tip. Thanks.